we love a good challenge around here, and today we have challenged Ken Page and Orly with repurposing wine corks to turn them into unique and creative DIYs. I'm telling you right now, I learn the most when we put you guys into a competition, everybody. <laughs> and we're also very excited to kick off Countdown to Valentine's Day next week, and I know all three of you were inspired by the first original Hallmark movie for this Valentine's season, Valentine in the Vineyard, right? Yes, I love it. it it's got um, Brendan Penny, it's got Rachel Lee Cook. Uh, I actually love it, it's on February 2nd, and, and it actually takes place in a vineyard, which got all of our sort of oh. creative juices flowing. It's beautiful. We already have beautiful. date night planned, but just the two us. of us. The two yeah. of us. It's in the no calendar. No husbands allowed. No husbands allowed. It's okay. in the calendar. We're watching the movie. Yeah. And okay. if we have more corks after, we know what to do. Yeah. I was just going to say, collect those wine yeah. corks, everybody. Let's dive right in. Ken, you're right. up first. I mean, we're dealing with wine corks here, and so you went with a, a very creative... Cork board. Well, yes, creative and yet very traditional. Okay. A cork. Cork has been used. I grew up with cork bulletin boards, a child of the 70s. Um, so I said, let's go old school and turn them back into a cork bulletin board. Beautiful. Very easy. All you're going to need is embroidery hoop, which seems to be like one of my favorite tools right now. Um, and whatever size. I made it big, but I'm going to show you on sort of a mini model. Okay. And then I got corks. And then all you're going to do is, you don't need the inner. Get rid of your inner loop. Okay. And on the outer one, as I started here, what you're going to do is just take your corks and fill up the center. If you I'll help you out a little you. bit, sure. The now, reason why you want that outer is because you need this little screw here, right? You need later. the tension, right? Yeah, so that's right. a good point. As you do it, sort of open it up so it's as wide as possible. Okay. And then squeeze in as many corks as you can. Um, and then once it's as full as possible, all you're going to do is sort of tighten this up, and that's going to cinch everything back together. So it's not held together with glue or backing or anything like that. If any that? of them want to sort of slip out, then just go back through with a little squirt of glue here and there as needed. But then you can touch it up. And then you've got a real cork board made out of A real cork board yeah. to hang it to really make it happen. I yes. just got a piece of rope, some masking tape. Wrap that right around. As you can see here, I yes. hid the masking tape with some extra rope um, for my little... Um, Push pins, all I did was a standard thumbtack. I hot glued a wool felt ball, and then to really sort of make it sort of come to life, I used an old wood spool to hang it. So the whole thing sort of works as this sort of wonderful it does. vintage thing. I love the little accent color too, you, uh, you painted it. I painted it right, all to sort of work together so it looks complete. And if you don't have enough uh, corks, what can we do? So I bought mine, because I see how smooth it is, I yes. want mine all the same height. So I bought a bag of corks from the cork store. However, you don't have to, because yes. the pages have wonderful variety. Uh, which is yes. a great segue, thank you. Mm. Well, well done, Paige, take it away, <laughs> yes. I love these. I do, I love that, that I went kind of 3D, so they go in and out, kind of like Ken said, this is not flat. Yes. And if you'll notice, they all have a little red tint. I did not do that. I actually bought ones that were red wine corks. You see? So it will dye it for you, and I love that it's different colors. So red, whatever kind of wine it was, Merlot or Cab, yeah. it will create a different kind of red or purple. So I loved that. And now you might think I'm really crafty with making these letters. I actually skipped that well, whole crafty. You are really crafty with making letters, but you well, don't have to be is the point, No, right? you can go to your craft store, and they already come for you. Like for this guy. Yes. So you can see this. you find any letter you have. So I got the P, the ampersand, and the J for okay. Paige and Jason. Okay. And then I took all of my, lay this down going the right way. Okay. Um, then I took all my corks to add just a tiny bit of glue. Okay. I'll and get them coming. Thank you. Go. Hand them off to me. I'm going to need a little more than that. Okay. You know, be so a little said, more generous. Uh, there we go. And you just keep them going. Like, just, just keep like them that, going. And just pop them on. That's all you around. need. That's it. Okay. And this just goes on and on and on all the way down. How would you display Thank this? You. you know, I... I really love it sitting up on it on its own. Okay. But you know, if you if you wanted to lean it against something, you definitely could. But um, or hang it on the wall, totally fine, like Ken did. But what I did here was I wanted to stand up on its own. So I got some. This is just a one by six, but you can use any size wood. I got an L bracket here. Put it on the board, and you can see there's holes already. It tells you where to put the screws, so it's so easy. And then I'm going to turn this sideways so you guys can see. I just put that there. That's attached it, stand. and it stays up on its own. Yeah, just like that. That's amazing. Yes. Well done. Thank well you. done. I'm telling you right now, Orly, uh -oh. it's your uh -oh. turn. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Orly's about to throw it down. down. She's throwing it down. She's throwing it down. Throw down. down. I'm saying I very much like what you did. Okay. No but. Okay, that sounded like ah, I'm talking. Ah, good. No, so, okay. No but. 
DIY cork flower vase. Yes. Take it away. Okay, so for me, I get the joy more than anything out of the actual making of things. And so for me, if <laughs> I can use the same materials to make new things over and over and get that experience, I love it. So a couple weeks ago, I made vases. They were winter vases where oh. I used hot glue to create all different patterns. I wrote things on them. I did snowflakes. Right. Hot glue can peel off. So you can peel those vases off, and same with this. We're going to apply the corks to the vase with hot glue, and you could peel them off for the next project later. Just like that. Which I love. Yeah, it's really making, it's really being useful and being smart about your materials. So I've got a glass vase here. Now I'd say I did the same thing that Ken did. I bought corks because I wanted all, not only uniform size, but also uniform color, so that I could kind of create, you can see over here, this sort of color block. I liked the ability to find exactly the colors that I needed. So when you're doing it, just take a look at your vase and look at the corks that you have and sort of decide size-wise how much room you have. Do you want to go this way? Do you want to go, if you're going this way, do you have enough room for two? Kind of lay it out before you actually glue. Right. And then point. it's simple. Now you just glue. You always want to start at the bottom. And that's because if, you, if the bottom isn't flat, you're not going to be able to put the vase up evenly, right? If I didn't make the bottom right. flat like this, right. whereas you can see here on the top, this is actually overhanging just a little bit, yep. which is fine because you're hiding it on the inside. So you just continue to make your pattern alternate colors and sizes until the whole thing is full. Until it looks as fantastic. And when you're done, you can that. peel it off for the next project. Oh, oh my goodness. Let's go <laughs> again. Come on out here, Orly. All three of these DIYs. You can find everything you need, of course, at HallmarkChannel.com.